Hi, in this video we're going to be doing the second part of section 4.2, which is simplifying fractions. The previous video only covered um, prime factorization, but there's another half to 4.2. 4.2 is a big section. Okay, so we're actually going to be doing simplifying fractions now. And uh, I'm going to do this by example. And I'm going to teach you two different approaches to doing it, whichever way you prefer. There's the way they do it on my math lab, and then there's the other way that people do it. Um, but either approach is fine. Okay, so the instructions on these problems are write the fraction in lowest terms. Write the fraction in lowest terms. Okay? And what that means is basically, it just means simplify the fraction. Okay? And we're going to start with a relatively straightforward fraction. The first fraction we're going to start with is 2 over 4, or 2 fourths. So you can either say it is 2 over 4 or 2 fourths. Now there's two methods that I'm going to teach you. Um, so let's start with method number one. So method number one, this is one way of doing it, is you divide the top and bottom. So you divide the numerator and denominator by um, common factors. Okay, divide the numerator and denominator uh, by common factors. And a lot of students actually prefer this. That's why I'm covering this one first. This is not how they do it in my math lab. Um, but this is a nice way of doing it, and this is usually the, the first way I teach it. So when I say common factors, the only tricky part is you have to think of numbers that go into both your numerator and your denominator. Um, but like with this problem, that shouldn't be too bad, because what's a number that goes into 2? Well, 2, 2 is the only number besides 1 that goes into 2. And then what are numbers that multiply to 4? Well, you only have 2 and 2. Um, so what are we going to divide the top and the bottom by? Well, what's in common is a 2. So using method 1 here is particularly easy with a fraction like this. So you start with 2 over 4. We can see that we can divide the top and the bottom by 2. So students usually write um, this notation to show that they're dividing the top and the bottom by 2. And then you write equals, and you just simplify. So on the top, everybody should know that 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we're going to have a 1 on the top. And then on the bottom, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we actually get 1 over 2, or 1 half. And uh, because these are both prime numbers now, and there's no common factors, we know that we can't simplify the fraction anymore, so we know that the fraction is already in lowest terms. Okay? All right, and then um, that's method number one. I'll, most students seem to prefer method number one, but I did want to cover method number two with the same problem because that's how they do it on my math lab, and some students actually prefer method number two. So uh, method number two is factor the top and the bottom and cross out any common factors. Okay, so method number two, either method is fine, but method number two is factor the, the top and the bottom, so factor the numerator and denominator.
then cross out any common factors. Then cross out any common factors. Because remember, if you have the same thing on the top and the bottom, you can cross it out. Okay, so let's do the same exact problem using method number two. And this is the one that they use in my math lab. Okay, so my math lab uses this method. But you don't have to do it this way. You can do it, you can do method one. In fact, most people prefer method number one. Okay, but let's, let's see how we would do method number two. So we write two over four. Okay. And then we factor the top and the bottom. Well, on the top, the prime factorization is just going to be uh, 1 times 2. And you'll see why I wrote a 1 there in just a second. But because 2 is a prime number, the only other number you can multiply it by is 1. The only number you can factor it as is 1 times 2. And then 4, that can be factored as 2 times 2. So on the bottom, we're going to have 2 times 2. Okay, and then uh, now that we've factored everything completely, we can cross out any common factors. And some people would have written 2 squared on the bottom. You can do it that way, but most people would just write it out like this, where they write out repeated factors. That way they can easily cross stuff out. So we can see here that these 2s are going to cancel out. And so what are we left with? Well, on the top we still have a 1. And then on the bottom, we have a 2. So our answer is 1 half. Okay? So we still got the same answer uh, doing a completely different approach. Either method is fine. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing both methods unless you want to experiment with each one. Um, I would recommend picking whichever one you feel more comfortable with. And most students choose method number one because that's how they were taught in school. Uh, or at least most students have been taught that way. Okay, so that was example number one. Um, from now on, I'm probably just going to stick to method number one, just for the sake of saving time in my videos, so that my videos don't take so long. Okay, so we're going to do example number two now. Example number two, we're going to see some more complicated looking fractions. So example number two is 8x over 52. 8x over 52. So I'm going to be using method one. You can also use method two here. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm using method one. Okay? And... Um, so what I want to do is I want to think of a number that goes into both 8 and 52. Now, uh, 52 might be a number that you don't know because it doesn't show up in your times tables. But one thing that we do know is that 52 and 8 are both even. So we can actually divide the top and the bottom by 2. Actually, you could divide by 4. So if you can see that, then you could divide by 4. But if you can't see that, you can divide by 2 and then divide by 2 again. Okay, but notice there's an x on the top. We can't divide the top and the bottom by x, though, because there's only an x on the top. There's no common factor for the x's, so the x is just going to have to stay there. Okay, so using method 1, um, we can see that both of these numbers are even. So we can divide the top and the bottom by 2. And then on a calculator or by hand, we know that 2 divided, I'm sorry, 8 divided by 2 is 4. So on the top, we're going to have 4x. And then on the bottom, 52 divided by 2 is, if you, if you can't figure out what that is in your head, you can always use a calculator. So 52 divided by 2 is actually 26. But most people can do that in their head. Okay, so we have 4x over 26. Well, are we done yet? No, we're not done 
because um, these still have common factors. Right? These are both even numbers, so that means we can still divide the top and the bottom by 2 again. So I'll go ahead and do that again. So dividing the top and the bottom by 2. On the top, 4 divided by 2 is 2x. So we have 2x on the top. And then on the bottom, 26 divided by 2 is actually 13. And again, you can use a calculator if you're not up on your division or whatever. Um, but at this point, we know we're actually done with the problem. Okay, so how do we know we're done with the problem? Well, 2 is a prime number, and 13 is a prime number. And so there's no common factors here. So 2x over 13 is in lowest terms. It's simplified. So I go ahead and box it. Okay, this is my answer. All right, and um, again, most people prefer method number one because even though it could be slower, most people find it easier than having to factor everything. Um, but keep in mind that you actually have to look at the numbers and find common factors in order to cancel stuff out. Okay? And um, I'm just going to be focusing on method one because it's the popular way of doing it. Uh, if you want to see method two, that's how my math lab does it. But like with this problem, you would have to factor the top as two times two times two x. And then on the bottom, you'd have to factor it as uh, 13 times two times two. And then you would cross stuff out. Um, I mean, I guess I could do it just for this problem, but I don't want to do too many more using method 2. Okay, so just real quick, method 2, I changed my mind. I'll do, I'll do method 2 for problem number 2, just so you can see it. So how would you factor it? Well, um, 8 factors as 2 times 4, which is 2 times 2 times 2, x. So I have 2 times 2 times 2 times x. And then on the bottom, if you use a factor tree, and you factor 52, you're going to see that 52 is going to be 13 times 2 times 2. Okay, So you would need to do a factor tree if you can't do this factoring in your head. So do factor trees for 8 and 52. But after you do your factor trees, you're going to find that you should get this. So it should be 2 cubed on the top, and on the bottom is going to be 13 times 2 squared. Um, but rather than writing it as exponents, I'm just going to be crossing out any common factors. So as you can see here, I was able to cross out two of the twos on the top and the bottom, but nothing else crosses out. And then you get, um, on the top you have 2x, and then on the bottom we have 13. Now the part I skipped was making the factor tree, and that's the reason why most people don't like method two, is in order to get this, unless you can factor it in your head, you would have had to make a factor tree. So most people find method two to be more work, which is why most people work with method one. Because on most problems, method one is faster. And uh, so I've done two examples with both methods, it's up to you which one you want to use, but from now on, I'm just going to do method one. Okay. All right, so let's continue in this section on to some harder problems. Okay, so um, example number three. Example number three. This is 50 over 70. 50 over 70. So I will use method 1 from now on. I will use method 1 from now on. Okay, so for the rest of these problems and for the rest of the course, I will use method 1. Just because it tends to be more popular and I don't want to waste time doing method 2 over and over again. Okay, so here we want to look, if we're doing method 1, we want to look for a number that goes into both 50 and 70. 
Um, well, what you can do is if the last digit is zero um, for both of the numbers, that means that you can divide the top and the bottom by 10. Okay, so I'm actually just going to divide the top and the bottom by 10. And how do I know 10 goes into both of these numbers? Well, if you have your last digit is 0, that means it's automatically divisible by 10. So that's just a nice thing to keep in mind. So if I divide the top and the bottom by 10, that, that gets rid of those zeros. Okay, every time you divide by 10, a 0 on the top and the bottom go away. In fact, some people like to just cross out those zeros. So this zero and that zero, those cross out because we're dividing by 10. So what are we left with? We're left with 5 over 7. Now, can we simplify 5 over 7? No, because 5 and 7 are prime numbers, and there's no common factors. So um, that's our answer. Our answer is 5 over 7. Okay, so just remember, if, you're, if your last digit is 0 on the top and the bottom, then you can easily just divide by 10 on the top and the bottom, and that's going to get rid of that 0. That's all we ended up doing. You can also do it on a calculator if you prefer. Okay. All right, so that's example number 3. We're going to see a few more. So number 4, example number 4 is a little bit harder. This one is... 49x over 91x. 49x over 91x. Now this one's harder because 91 isn't in your times tables, or at least not in my times table. Um, so what we're going to have to do here is I'm going to teach method 1 but we're going to have to use a calculator to try to find numbers that go into 91. So, for example, we know that the numbers that go into 49 would be 7 and 7, right? So 49 is just 7 times 7. But what about 91? I don't know what goes into 91, so I'm going to have to practice on my calculator. So I'm going to take 91 and try dividing it by 7. If I divide 91 by 7, I actually get 13 which isn't in our times tables, but it turns out that 91 divided by 7 is 13, which means 91 equals 7 times 13. Okay, but because 91 divided by 7 is 13, that means I can divide the top and the bottom by 7. And there's something else I can divide by here as well. But let me start by dividing the top and the bottom by 7. Now, can anyone see anything else that's in common on the top and the bottom besides the 7? Well, um, if you notice, unlike one of the previous problems, here we actually have an x on the top and an x on the bottom. Uh, so we can actually divide the top and the bottom by x. So instead of dividing just by 7, we're going to divide the top and the bottom by 7x. Okay, and what's that going to do? that's going to mean that these x's are going to cross out. Okay, and remember, if you have the same factor on the top and the bottom, you can just cross it out. You don't even have to write out uh, divided by 7x, but some people like to, so I wrote it out. Okay, and then on the top now, we know that 49 divided by 7 is 7. And then on the bottom, since we experimented in our calculator, we know from our calculator that 91, 91 divided by 7 is actually 13. Okay, 91 divided by 7 is 13. So our denominator is going to be 13. All right, and both of the x's canceled out because there was an x on the top and the bottom. So our answer doesn't have an x. So our answer is just going to be 7 over 13. Um, so I wanted to jump into one of the harder problems later on in your homework. They don't get too much harder, but I wanted to make sure you're solid on all this. Okay, so problem number five, example number five. 
break the fraction in simplest form. And this one is 25xy, 25xy over 35y, okay? So 25xy over 35y. And we want to write this in simplest form. So we want to write this in lowest terms. Uh, so we're looking, if we're doing method one, which is the one that I like to focus on, um, we need to divide the top and the bottom by common factors. So looking at 25 and 35, notice that both of them end with the digit 5. What that means is if the last digit is 0 or 5, that means you can divide it by 5. Okay? So I'm going to actually divide the top and the bottom by 5 because I see that both of those numbers, 25 and 35, are multiples of 5. And then there's something else on, in common on the top and the bottom. Notice on the top, we only have an x uh, on the top, but we don't have an x on the bottom. So we can't divide by 5x because there's only one on the top. However, we can divide the top and the bottom by y. Well, because we have a y on the top and the bottom. So there's a common factor. So I'm actually going to divide the top and the bottom by 5y. And the y's cancel out. Okay, but there's still an x left on the top. So on the top, 25 divided by 5 is going to give us 5x. And then on the bottom, 35 divided by 5. Well, remember that from your times tables, 7 times 5 is 35. So 35 divided by 5 should be 7. All right, so our answer should be 5x over 7. And the reason we can't simplify it anymore is 5 and 7 are prime numbers, and x is only on the top. There's not an x on the bottom, so there's nothing to cancel it out with. Okay? And I think that's about as hard as your homework gets for the most part. Uh, most of the other numbers aren't too bad. I just wanted to do maybe one more example on... Uh, exponents, because we haven't seen any exponents yet. Okay, so this is going to be our last example from this section. So example number 6. 18x squared over 30x. Okay, 18x squared over 30x. Um, if you're not sure what x squared means, you could write x squared as x times x. So some people would do that. So why don't I do that? So we've got 18 times x times x on the top. And then on the bottom, we have 30 times x. So as you can see here, if you write it like this, there's only one x in common on the top and the bottom. So actually, only one of these x's is going to cancel out, but then there's going to be an x left over on the top. So that's why I wrote it that way. So remember, x squared, or x to the second power, means x times x. Okay, but we're still going to be doing method 1 here. So what's the number that goes into both 18 and 30? Well, if you think through your times tables, we know that 6 times 3 is 18, and 6 times 5 is 30. So that means we can divide the top and the bottom by 6. Okay, so I'm going to be doing that. So I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 6. All right, and then what else is in common here? Well, we already said there's an x on the top and the bottom in common. So I'm actually going to divide the top and the bottom by 6x. Okay, so what's that going to do? Well, an x on the top and the bottom is going to cancel out. But the thing is, there's still an x left over on the top. And the reason for that is we started with x squared. So there was actually two x's on the top. Okay? So for our answer here, uh, on the top we have 18 divided by 6 is 3x. Okay? So on the top we have 3x. And then on the bottom, 30 divided by 6 is 5. So we get 3x over 5.
And that's actually our answer. Okay? So, uh, 3x over 5 is the answer. How do we know that we can't simplify it anymore? Well, 3 is prime, 5 is prime, there's no common factors, so there's nothing else to simplify. Alright? So that actually finishes that section.